Shalom, brothers and sisters. All praises goes to the Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, through Yahusha HaMashiach. I pray that y'all still believe in it as I do, brothers and sisters. And um, I really want to talk about this relationship between the Almighty and His Son. But before I do, um, we are moving even faster to that final day of the coming of Yahusha. Brothers and sisters, we see so many things in this world taking place. The temperatures are getting hotter as scripture has prophesied. We see the heathens going even matter and leaving off from their pristine image that they was projecting into the world to a more foul image of the beast. We see the AI systems being projected into all the earth, all through the internet now. The AI system is starting to infiltrate all of AI. We see the cryptocurrencies creeping up. You know, there's a reason why they call it crypto crypt. As in dead. So, we see the digital currency. Everything is just cultivating into this mesh of wickedness. You know, it's coming together like some defiling pot of gumbo with all these little things being added to it, all these defiling wicked things being added to the pot one step at a time. And we see, um, of course, um, the religions are even showing their own butt nakedness even more around the world. As we come out of our sleep and slumber, as we come away from our sins and transgression and equities and turn back to the Most High, as we get closer to Him, they get closer to the enemy. They get closer to the devil. And those fallen messengers that are over their nations, as we get closer to the Almighty, who is over our nation of people, we see it, you know, it's happening. Our neighbors, our family, our friends are turning more on us. They have a more evil eye. They're being more wicked. They're cursing us and, and, and just doing all manner of defiled things in the face or even behind the back. As we approach every single year, I have seen more evil enter into this world since I woke up. And I've seen people even close to me get more distant, act more violent toward me, act more hateful, just like a pure enemy. So I know that all of you are seeing these same things happening to you. For if you are, of the Most High and with the Most High, you will be persecuted for the Word's sake. And that's another thing. Mentioning to the Word to some is like it's like throwing some gasoline on them and, and setting them on fire. They can't stand when it's you 
talking about the word. No, they don't want you talking about the word. They want their pastor, their minister, their reverend from the sun worshiping churches to preach and teach to them lies and deceptions that they can continue on in their sins and equities and transgressions and where they won't have to confront their own faces in the mirror. They don't want to do that. They want to continue to hide in the shadows of darkness. And so they will lash out at you and persecute you and tell you to stop, stop telling us these things. No, we don't want you talk, talking to us about the word. You know, I'm seeing so much happen all around me. And in this world, and even with Hebrews, man, always out looking to get you. Ooh, is he going to say this, say that? No. They waiting. My goodness, brothers and sisters, we need to stay prayed up in this last hour, in this last moment. Because it's coming when you're going to be really tried and tested. When they lock down the whole system. And you can't do nothing. You can't pay for nothing. You can't. You can't go out. You can't drive your cars. You can't drive. I mean, you can't fly nowhere. What you going to do? You're going to have to have major faith at that point in time. You're going to have to trust in the Almighty then. You're going to have to hear His voice tell you to, to go here or go there. There will be water over here or there will be some food over here. Stay put in this particular area for this amount of time. Now go over, go over here. You're going to have to be ready. Prepare your souls, brothers and sisters, is what I'm saying. And stay prayed up. Pray for your brothers and sisters around the world who are waking up. Pray for the other nations as well who belong to Yahusha as well, brothers and sisters. Some of you just praying for Zion, just praying for um, Yasharal and the 12 tribes. Well, this... There are other people out there that the Father's going to save. Let's not forget about them. Anyway, let's get into this here image and a relationship between the Almighty and His Son. So, we get this foreshadow of the Father and Son right here when we read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 where he said let us make man in our image after our likeness so what is that image what is that likeness of course we all know it's the character it's the uh, it's even the physical appearance of us but what about that image also being um, the father and the son image who is one. So we also have to take a look at man and woman being one. And we know Hashtan has been working hard to separate that image, to cut off that image of the oneness of the man and the woman since time began, since the garden, since the serpent deceived Eve, it was to cut off that image of the Almighty in man and in woman. So that same image exists between the Father and Son. It existed there first 
for the Father made his own help meet, which he called his Son. And so he projects the authoritative, dominant leadership image. And the Son projects the submissive obedience image. And the two are indeed one. And this is why we can say Yahweh is Yahusha. Because it is Yahusha who came out of him to be his perfect helpmeet to create all life. And so again, you see the same image with the man. The man was created first and he was given authority and dominion. Then the father took Eve out of the man and made her submissive and obedient to the man, the husband. And Hashatan has been trying to destroy this image since the beginning. And he, he's doing a wonderful job right now in destroying that image and turning woman against the man and man against the woman and making sure they do not come together in this powerful force to live their lives in a in their roles, in their place of position, in the image of the Father, which is the two are one. And so, when you see the Messiah saying, I am, he, he is, he's from everlasting. This is the understanding that you need to have when you hear us say, Things like Yahweh, Yahusha, it was Yahweh come down to save us in Yahusha. Because the two are one. And as I said in past videos, it don't matter who is doing the saving. It's always going to point back to the throne, the king of all, the most high. It's like we get plenty of examples when. David was king. Where everything in the kingdom reflected upon him. Even though it was someone else that uh, went out to the battle. It was, it was reflected as King David's victory. So you have the same thing happening throughout the scriptures as you read. Where, yes, everything going to be reflected back to the Almighty Yahweh, no matter whether it's a angel sent to save us, whether it's the word itself come down to save us, you know, Yahusha, or whether it's um, uh, some man that the Father uses to save us, or some woman. The Father uses to save us. It's always going to reflect back to Him. This is His creation. His heaven and His earth. Everything points right back to Him. Regardless. Brothers and sisters. So. The same is true in. The man's household. With his wife. His woman. Everything of that household is going to reflect right back to him, including his wife. What she does, how she acts, how she's even perceived, what things that she does. It's going to reflect back to him, for he has been designated as the leader over that household, even though both of them have dominion, like it says here, uh, oh, right here, and let them have dominion over the fish, sea, the fowls, the air, the cattle, the earth, and every creepy thing. They have dominion together as a unit. 
as one body, as one soul, one flesh. Just as the Most High has shown that same image. Come together, brothers and sisters. The two are indeed one. So, as you see, the husband and the wife are one in this earth. The father and son are one in Shemayim above. Brothers and sisters. Okay, I'm having some recording problems here. I don't know if it's recording or not. My computer is really acting up now. On this particular message, on this particular understanding, it's like it's lagging behind just a bit to where I can't tell if it's recording or not. So, um, I'm trying to click the button to see. Okay, it's not catching up. Okay, now it's caught up. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. All right, brothers and sisters. This particular message is hardly understood by many in the earth, in the world. Many that pick up this particular uh, Bible or the Bible itself, uh, this image, this correlation between the Father and Son is, is, is always explained in, 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 through the eyes of the heathens. And even that explanation is brought into our world. The Hebrew eyes, the Hebrew world, the Yahshualite world. Well, the, the Father said it's time for y'all to understand this book and the true interpretation of it. And the oneness that him and his son shares is the same oneness that you and your, the husband and wife shares. The image that is being projected is their image up above. It's the same image here in the earth. Whereas the father put the life inside of the son and the son created all things. The man puts his seed inside of the woman and the woman creates life and bears that life. Gives birth to that life. Y'all see? It's the same image, but in a spiritual sense, above, brothers and sisters. I pray that this message is being received and understood. Uh, because there is so much misunderstanding going on with the scriptures itself. Not just with this here particular uh, topic between the father and the son that what is their relationship what is who is Yahweh who is Yahusha is Yahusha over Yahweh no are they still one yes is Yahweh even Yahusha yes how is that because he's he's directly of him he was taken out of the father just as the woman is a part of the man is the woman the man yes she is from the womb of man that's what she called womb man so she is man she's directly from him and now she was separated for her jobs and her duties that she is to do with the man in the earth. The same as Yahusha. Is separated. To do his jobs. And his duties. In heaven and in earth. And the father gave him this. 
dominion and authority. You know, we see these things in um in Daniel. Daniel was shown something great. Let's see if I'm going to get this to work. Okay. Somebody's cutting grass out there, brothers and sisters. So, if you hear anything, that's probably what it is. Okay, let's go to, let's see. Yeah. Daniel chapter 7. Yes, my computer is running real slow right now. So, right here, we hear the ancient of days being talked about. His hair as the pure wool. And you go further down, you see that the Son of Man is brought before the ancient of days. So we know we're talking about the Father and Son. But there's some special things said here. There was given dominion, esteem, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So the Father has honored the Son and give him this authority. But we know that the buck stops with him, right? And so, yes, there is a throne. The Father sits on his throne and his Son sits at the right hand of it. So, the Father has given us also the same thing. Look at this. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. So we who are in Yahusha share in what was given to him. This is proven here. These saints shall possess the kingdom and have dominion over it. And of course in uh, Revelations it tells us that we shall become kings and priests, right? Just as Yahusha. Uh, let's see, is that five and nine, I believe? Oh, five and ten. Where it says, and has made us unto our Elohim kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So we know that Yahusha was given the kingdom. He's a king and he's a high priest. But we are kings and priests unto him as well. So we essentially become what he is. And even the new body that he's received, uh, we shall receive as well. To be just like the son. To be in the son and to be and the Father, in the same way, brothers and sisters. So, this, what we are experiencing in life is a foreshadow of what is to come, brothers and sisters. That's if you walk in the law, such as commandments of the Most High. What you are experiencing is a foreshadow of the completeness that is to be completed within us when we obtain our new bodies. Just as the Levitical priesthood was a foreshadow of the Melchizedek priesthood that was to come, a high priesthood, a heavenly priesthood, so, we are literally living out the father and son's relationship as one in the earth when you become married, you know, husband and wife. You are living out that relationship between the two. And this is why the wife 
is supposed to be obedient to her husband. For the son is obedient to his father. Without question. You know, Lay, who was um, Jacob's first wife, never raised a railing accusation against her husband her whole life. Not once she showed pure faith, pure obedience. She showed that image of the son with the father perfectly with Jacob. Not to say that uh, Jacob didn't sin or um, Sarah didn't, but the image was projected in both of them as he was the head of his family leading and guiding comforting protecting bringing forth understanding of the word to his family to his wife and all of his household his children we see all of this in the father inside of the son and the son has his dominant role over his over the woman who is the church or the congregation that he is married to and he has his husbandry duties to do with us in leading us guiding us cultivating us converting us chastising us as well so that we may become perfect before him so I just want to expound it a little bit more on those uh, previous last few videos that I've done about the father and son relationship and its meaning and if you just look right there in your own households, if you are married, you would see the image of heaven right there. Father, son, angels, man, woman, child. And you'll see that image everywhere. Sun, moon, stars. You'll see it everywhere, brothers and sisters. It's there. And this here will open up the book. For you to start all over with Genesis chapter 1. And with with all this in mind. And, and even when you read the beginning of John. The book of John. Where it, it tells you that the son created everything. Now you have the understanding on how and why the son was creating everything. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So this understanding is not for everybody. It's for those who got, who truly have eyes to see and ears to hear. And, and even though, uh, Christianity got some of this right, they don't even understand the depth of it though. But we're here to break forth this understanding now. So that all could understand who is meant to understand the father and son's relationship. Which is in man and woman. That very image that's being destroyed by Hashatan today. And the roles are being reversed. Where the woman is lifted up. The woman is so rebellious. And so disobedient. And not in her lot. Not in her place. Not in her creation. She's not in her dominion either. She has a dominion. It's not over the man. But it is over her household and her kids. Whom she must raise up. 
as Yahusha has dominion over the congregation in whom he must give birth to and raise up. Yah see the image in birth as well from the woman giving birth to new life in Yahusha. He gives birth to new life in a new creature and he has to nurture, cultivate, protect, raise that child up as a and this is why the scriptures say you must be as a child to be converted. If you if you're not reborn and you don't become a child, you will not listen. You will not understand, brothers and sisters. I pray that this is understood. Let me know if y'all understand what I'm saying. If y'all see it and hear it. Or is this too much meat? I hope I broke it down as simple as I can over these last few videos. Because it's very important to understand this now. Especially with the true believers. And spread this video around. Spread the other ones. Upload them to your channels. Remake them. Do an even better job than I've done here. You know, I'm just discussing it. I'm not really, I haven't brought out that much scripture concerning this topic. But uh, when I do, I'm gonna, it's going to be a full lesson on this. But some of you already see it and understand. and Because, uh, you know, sometimes faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Brothers and sisters. So, though I'm showing you, but you are remembering what you read, you're putting it together, you're seeing the New Testament with, in conjunction with the Old, uh, you're seeing the Tanakh Torah, you're seeing the laws, you're seeing the image of the Father right there in your house, so you, you putting it together. And that's what I want. I wanted to put it together for y'all. So, uh, thank y'all for tuning in. This ought to help many of my brothers and sisters, especially those who are preaching and teaching the word on their respective channels. Uh, share this particular video with them as well. Y'all know what I mean? And, um, I pray that this really helps all of y'all out there get closer to the Most High and His Son. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. See y'all in the next video. Oh, brothers and sisters, don't forget to pray for me. Keep me on your prayer list, please. If you ain't put me on there yet, put me on your prayer list. I'm praying for all of you and always have. I never stopped. Even if I haven't uploaded a video for a while, I'm still praying. I'm still reading. I'm still on the path, brothers and sisters, in the preparation and the coming of Yahushua. Shalom.